New, 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 new. Good work. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you have an Adafruit account and you want to go into your account and get the new product newsletter, we will never send you one unless you want one. We don't do that. You can. Adafruit.com slash newsletter. This is not Adafruit Daily, which is just our regular newsletters that we do. No spam at all. Yes. People like it. Somebody tweeted they said it's just pretty awesome. We yeah. try to keep it like a nice newsletter. We just tell you what the latest news yeah. things are and news. And then, of course, subscribe to our <coughs> blog if you want, like, a daily onslaught of everything happening yeah. all the time. So I have one kind of returning new product. So we got the uh, Axie Draw. And then uh, Asher, who's here, uh, did this today. So I have a little video. This is... Put it together. Yeah. And he did this all in Python 3. And uh, the Axie Draw is neat because you can do art. You can do generative art. You could use Inkscape. You can also just write straight up code. And uh, cool. I was thinking about using this instead of having you sign the 3500 makes. Um, you said it's a little slow. Well, we could have done it. It would just been it. it and I, but I think people would have said they really wanted your signature, not a robot signature. This is really nice. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah. And it works with anything. You don't have to use a sharpie. You use a marker. You oh yeah. Use a pen. You I wanted use... this so it would be visible. Yeah. But uh, I should have really dropped this. Nice work. Yeah. Me me me. It's so me, peaceful. Me, me. Yeah. Okay. So, you know. Boom. Returning returning product. Okay. okay so okay, pick one up in the shop. Yeah. We sell those. Yeah. Okay. Wire. Magnet wire. We have finally some enameled magnet wire. I mean to get this in the store for a bit, and um, I finally remembered. Uh, so this is magnet wire. It's extremely thin, enameled copper wire. It's used for a couple different things. Um, sometimes people wrap it around uh, to make antennas. You can make antennas with it or magnet coils, voice coils, motors, inductors. It's basically, you know, whenever you need a lot of wires uh, that passes a significant amount of current, even though it's quite thin, you can still, you know, pass an amp through it, um, so even briefly. And um, I think it's like 30 six gauge maybe or 38 gauge wire uh, another thing it's really good for is surface mount soldering retouch like rework of boards if you want a jumper to very small connections or you want to solder directly to a surface mount wire pin um, surface mount uh, uh, pad pin or pad or pin you can do that with this magnet wire what gauge uh, it's 0.1 millimeter very thin um, and it's enameled so you can burn the enamel off with either a lighter or uh, what I like to do is you melt a little bit of solder onto the tip of a soldering iron and you poke the wire in. So I can show it on the overhead. It's, it's really thin, but I can, I can show it off. So yeah, you can see how fine it is. And it's, it does have um, enameling on it, so it, it's not conductive. Like, you know, if you, if you connect it to this, this actually doesn't connect from wire to wire because it's got that enameling on it. Um, and then you just burn it off if you want to solder to it, and you can just solder to the wire. So you get, uh, you know, a couple meters of it. It's not a ton, but honestly, I don't think you ever need a ton of this wire. Like, you usually only need, like, a couple inches at a time, um, unless you're, you know, doing a huge voice coil. But for general purpose, uh, we work soldering, coil winding, I think it's a good amount. Okay. So check it out. Magnet wire. Next up. It's a cable. It's a multi-use uh, power cable. And uh, I actually got this for me to use, but it, it was so handy. I was like, oh, you know what? I should probably put this in the shop. Basically, you can connect it up to your multimeter or your uh, bench shop power supply, as you see here. And it just gives you a lot of different output options. So instead of having like lots of wires that you're constantly switching around, like I'm often testing things and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tr you know, test the current draw of this LED. And then I'm like, oh, I have to test this feather. Or then I'm gonna plug in a USB device. It kind of has um, three of the most popular options. So let's go to the overhead and I can show this off. So you've got um, here, this is the banana clips. This goes into your multimeter or your <coughs> benchtop power supply. It just plugs right in. That's normal. And there's a little multiplexer boxy thing. And on the other end, you have a, a lot of options. So um, most popular is uh, crocodile or alligator clips. Um, so this is really nice, easy if you want to connect to like wires that are thicker or you know PCP pads or something. And they're shrouded, so that's nice. We also have mini grabbers. This is good if you want to grab to like smaller uh, pins or pads, but uh, sometimes you know you want crocodile 
clips and sometimes you want the mini grabbers they're both good these are good for uh you know grabbing to 0.1 inch uh pitch wire so you've on a on a header board um and then also you have a usb um, the thing with the USB is the data lines are not connected, so it's not good for charging like iPhones or iPods. It is good for like charging almost anything else that uh, charges or powers over USB, but it's a good way to basically connect and do current draw tests with your uh, power supply. There's also these green and yellow wires, but they're actually just connected to the same as the red black ones, so we don't use them. They're a little confusing. I was hoping they were data, but they're not. They're not the data lines. They're just um, they're like random lines. So you basically get USB crocodile and mini grabber but that's still pretty nice and um way easier than what i do which is i always like seem to have to rewire up a usb connector to my power supply yeah. to test uh you know for example i i like to test um power draw like a raspberry pi doing something sometimes i'll hook it up to my um uh, bench top supply to just verify it works at different voltages and and what the current draw at each voltage is so there's no actual electronics in it it's just like a little pcb inside of here i can okay. open this up if people really want but uh and then just brought out to these different cables. Very handy, though. A little accessory for your okay. bench top supply. And the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ida, is this. This is the AMG 8833. This is a kind of neat sensor. This has actually been around for a while, but the price recently dropped to a, a reasonable amount. So this is the um, an 8x8 thermal array, like basically mini camera. So you can get like, you know, cameras in the shop that are like 200 pixels by 100 pixels and, and you get like a real thermal camera, sometimes called FLIR cameras, but they're really expensive. And also you can't necessarily integrate them into your project. They might be, well, first off, they're expensive and delicate, but second, they usually need like a high speed uh, interface. Sometimes they're USB cameras. What's nice about this is it all works over I2C, so it's very easy to add to any microcontroller or microcomputer project. Um, and we have example code for both Arduino compatibles and Raspberry Pi. So I have. Yeah, and you, uh, Dean did this one. Yes, this is a first project by Dean, yeah. who has joined me. I now have someone here at Adafruit who's working on hardware with me. Yeah, Dean um, was one of our software developers. And he decided he wanted to do embedded work. And so now he's working with you yep. doing hardware. K10 also did um, some of the hardware design. So yeah. K10 did the original PCB design. And then Dean did the revision design and also the software. So I uh, got to experience kind of everything you, from. You have a crew. I have a crew now. Okay. So you have to do a lot. On the overhead? Mm hmm. So this is um, the sensor, and you can see there's this is like the little lens. We have uh, level shifting and power regulation. The lens is right in the middle. It looks like it's offset, but that's because we put, wanted to put the lens in the very center. And um, here I have it just connected up to my Metro, which is Arduino compatible. And I hooked up um, one of our uh, 8x8, uh, sorry, uh, 144. It's a 1.44 inch, 128 by 128 pixel. And I just have each uh, of the sensor outputs uh, connected, you know, basically outputs to a block. Now, when you read from the sensor, it gives you a 64 point Celsius measurement in floating point. But we just basically map that to some colors and put that here. What well, you're seeing actually, this this red dot is actually the camera, because the uh, the camera is actually a little bit hot, so you see a little bit of a red dot hmm. here. But um, if I tilt this, and then I can put my hand over it, you can see, you know, I don't have very hot hands. Let me see what happens to me. Oh yeah, you should put your hand over it. Yeah, you're much warmer. Yeah, I always run a little hot. Ooh, yeah, you're super hot. Look at that. You're like red. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm always running a fever. Yeah. So you can you can Keep, also keeps the germs out. So you can use it as like a you know a camera array, and it runs at 10 hertz. You can also, of course, uh, it'll tell you the temperature at each point if you want. Um, there's some example code that that they released, Panasonic, was for like human detection. Yeah, hello. Your thumb isn't that hot. No. That's not where the heat leaves me. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Super warm there. Yeah. It's like on fire. Professor Xavier wanted me to do all this stuff, but I wasn't into it. Anyways. Um, yeah. So you can use this with Arduino, and you get um, eight by eight grid. Uh, it's pretty good. If you're willing to use a Raspberry Pi, or actually probably a, just a more powerful microcontroller, you can do some filtering on the output, and you can actually um, because it's measuring. Um, you know, like environmental, it's an you know, environmental sensor and, and oh, hold on, let me just make sure this doesn't get unplugged. One second. Oh, of course, that was not really plugged in. Hold on. What do you want to do? I have to, it, you know, I pulled it. it I'm all alone again. Out. Yeah, this kind of happens to me. Hold on. I'll, I'll cut to the video. Oh, you have this plugged in.
Do you need a plug? What? Do you need a... I need to stick it. All the outlets are taken. Do we, do we really need... I don't know. What do you need? Uh, you know, oh, sure. Yeah, this one. I'm on this. Okay. Whoa. Uh, what? I just unplugged this. No? No, that... You can't... That was the worst thing to unplug. <laughs> <coughs> that was that was bad. Uh, I think um, I I think you locked me out of Wirecast. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> All right. <coughs> yeah. Now what? Okay, I'm bringing my my demo back up. Live demos. Moral of the story is watch out for where the plug is. Okay, so can we go to the uh, overhead? Yeah. For those who use Wirecast, if you unplug a secondary monitor, you Don't do get that. locked out of Wirecast. Yeah, I was like, okay, unplug this. He's like, yeah, sure. Um, so what's neat about this is um, with a Raspberry Pi, you can use the um, filtering capabilities that are built into Python using SciPy to do uh, 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 bicubic, like, uh, averaging and so you take the 64 points but you can turn it into 124 points so you can get a lot higher precision if you like you can move your fingers and you can actually see individual points and actually what's these is you can see above both the camera and um, the, the the line here is the lights the fluorescent light above I wonder That's how far I can get away where it still says like no you're hot this is why MOSFET the cat will not leave me alone because I'm warm and he just uses me as a heating pad. You're super warm. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's the demo, finally. Okay. That's and it. And with that, Lady Ada, is, uh, that, was, that was new products. You're done. Yay!